guys, welcome back to another episode of SV Cruiser. Uh, in this episode, I'm actually going to be covering just a few things on the bike. Uh, it is about four days later after uh, the previous video that you guys just saw of me finding problems. Um, I'm going to discover just a couple more problems, I'm sure, but right now I'm just going to be doing just a couple other things. Upon taking everything apart in the last video, I found that there was some debris inside of this fuel line. I didn't really like that too much, so I went ahead and uh, I tried to clear it out, but unfortunately, it's just not going to work. The bike's old, so I might as well just go ahead and buy a new one. The second thing I went ahead and I bought was um, another set of coils for this bike because it's very possible that uh, the coils on this, even though they're new, they may be defective. I don't know, but I did buy another set. They're OE and they're a complete replacement for these. Uh, I also want to attack the actual fuel rail itself. Um, I got some carb cleaner here. Uh, I bought this at, up at Walmart for like two bucks or something like that. Um, but using this to try to clear out the actual fuel lines and the fuel rails, uh, hopefully that'll help me out and get rid of most of the debris. Uh, the next thing I'll end up doing is I'm gonna take this radiator and I'm gonna drop it forward and down so I can access the front spark plug I'm going to check out the condition of that spark plug and see whether it's you know burning too rich, too lean, just basically what its condition is. Now the actual negative and the positive wires, I'm going to take them off the battery, take those wires and hold them together. They're not going to be attached to the battery, just they're going to be attached to each other. What that does is it actually grounds out the actual electrical in the bike. It'll ground it out and it'll drain all of the energy that's probably still inside the computer, which is what's holding the FI code. So if I do that, clear the code, hopefully. Um, after about an hour of it touching, I'll take it back off, put it on the battery, and then I'll eventually check out what I've got. I'm gonna add some magnets uh, to the bottom of the bike. I'm gonna add uh, a couple of these uh, to the outside casing of the oil filter. And what that'll do is actually catches all the extra debris that's floating around on the engine, if there is any, and it ultimately catches all of it instead of it being recycled back into the engine. Also, uh, take magnets. It's a little trick that bikers use. Uh, we'll pull up to a light and there's nobody else around and the light won't change. So we have to wait and wait and wait and hope, hope for somebody to come up behind us so that they can trigger the light and we can go. Well, with magnets, you actually take the magnet and put it on the bottom of the frame underneath the engine itself and it gets as low as you can to the, to the uh, ground and that system, the wire that's on the ground, will actually pick up that electromagnetic field and it'll trigger the light thinking that it's a car. A little nifty, huh? <sighs> wow, that was a mouthful. <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, let's get to work. <laughs>
Okay, as you clearly saw, I dropped the radiator down in the front. Now, for those who have this kind of a setup, let me explain something real fast, all right? Y'all saw all the damage on my, on my radiator right here, okay? But look, when you drop the radiator like so, you see that? Nothing touches that radiator when you drop it like this. It's just one bolt, I'm sorry, two bolts, and it drops straight down. And what does it access? Well, by golly, if that isn't a spark plug. That's a straight shot right into that spark plug. But you just kind of let it sit, you know, just rest on here, and it, it's, it's not gonna hurt anything. Just take your time with it. So what I'm gonna do here, you guys can't see, you probably can. All right, is uh, I'm actually gonna take this spark plug uh, out entirely, and I'm going to replace it with the former coils that were in there before, with the uh, original connections and everything. And uh, I'm gonna see how that works, because it's very possible that I got a hold of some bad coil. I mean, I will have to drop this down uh, later on in order to put the new uh, coils in there, which frankly, I could just wait until tomorrow when the new coils come in and I'll just put the new coils in. Um, yeah, look what I just did. I just talked myself into common sense. This is, a, I think, a, a vacuum hose for the emissions. For uh, like my exhaust gas for circulation or EGR, and take this off, move it to the side. That way I have room to work. Now I can just like pull this out. I don't know if you guys can see. I hope you can. But I am just it. The reason why it, it's kind of a suction right now is I got that apparently there's some dielectric grease on there. But I guess it was on there. Yeah, it was on there. Okay. That's my bad. The only cylinder that wasn't on there was the back one. This one actually was. And so I'll eat that one. My, looks like my dielectric grease is still on there from before. Absolutely clean connections. So that tells me that they didn't get into this one. But I still want to check that spark plug anyway since it has had the opportunity to run since then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my uh, spark plug socket down in that hole and uh, I'm going to retrieve that spark plug, pull it out, and check its condition. There's a rubber gasket that's on the inside. It's actually supposed to um, grab the spark plug itself unfortunately is I've done this so many times that it's really worn to be honest all right barely broke which is good okay I'm gonna take that off I can do the rest by hand I always use spark plugs by hand you guys should always do that because you run a risk of uh, breaking a spark plug or, see what I mean? It's not supposed to be for a bike. It's supposed to be for a car. But I do this this way so I don't break spark plugs. Trust me, I learn from personal experience of what to do and what not to do. And that is one thing you don't do. Alright, I can feel that it's skipping on the threads. So let's see if I can pull it out. Come out. No. Yes. Yes, I got it out. That's fantastic. To really inspect the spark plug. It looks pretty dry. It was kind of dark. So that's good. It means it was also burning rich. So both cylinders are burning rich. They're not burning too hot. So that means they're not burning lean. So by it burning rich is probably one of the reasons why I was cutting out. Very possible. So 
All right, well, let's go ahead and put the spark plug back in. All right, once you guys run this up by finger first, okay, you gotta do it by hand, then you get your wrench. Hook it up to it, and you torque it. So we're gonna get that on there first. Okay, not too much pressure, just a little bit and then stop, all right? Reason why is you can break that spark plug off in the, in the cylinder block and that would really suck for you. I'm just telling you, I've done it before and it really sucks. All right, so now comes time for the battery. So what I'm gonna do is remove some stuff off the side because I need to clear my work area. Now what's gonna happen is this wire here and the main power wire, I'm gonna take both of those off of the battery, cross them and hold them together pretty much. And uh, what that is supposed to do is actually drain the electronics or drain any uh, power that's left inside the computer because uh, that could be one of my issues as to why I have an FI code. Very possible. Um, I didn't have an FI code when I gave it to K's Motorsports uh, and I can prove that to you guys if you guys look at the uh, videos prior to that uh, prior to that day of me giving the bike to K's Motorsports y'all can see personally that uh, I did not have the FI code so what I'm going to do here is take this off alright that's two off alright take this off take this off all right, main power. All right, I don't even know if they're gonna reach. Yeah. I'm gonna get these things to lock. Not so much a lock, but just hold them together. This is supposed to actually drain the system. Work. Wow, oh, that's fantastic. I'm supposed to ground it out. All right. One and two. If I can get this thing just to stay. Now notice I'm not touching both of the poles together. If I can just get this thing to stay, that'd be fantastic. So what am I gonna do? I can't sit here and just hold it. Put some pressure on it. And hold it away. That might hold. But uh, yeah, that right there is supposed to actually drain all the energy in the system. <clears throat> Which is kind of like a hard restart or reset for the actual computer itself. Um, now if my computer is not going to work, I'm actually going to swap it back to the old ECU. Um, which, I mean, that one was possibly still good. I don't know, but... I'm gonna figure this out, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. Something's gotta work. <laughs> All right, well, that's pretty much it for that part. All right, guys, well, that's gonna be a wrap for today's project, and I'm, I've gone as far on the bike as I can possibly go. Uh, I've got parts that are gonna come in tomorrow, so we're gonna swap those out and see how that turns out for me. Uh, we're also gonna figure out or find out together if this method of crossing the terminals together on the actual wire would wipe the computer completely clean and knock out the FI code. We're going to figure that out. It's new to me, so cross our fingers. <laughs> Hopefully it works. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you haven't done so already, hit that notification bell up in the top right hand corner of the screen so you guys don't miss any future videos. And as always, I do appreciate you guys watching another episode of SV Cruiser. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.